trying to live by faith, but I'm feeling just a little bit alarmed. Good morning. It is great to see each of you out this morning. It's great to be out. And the, this morning I chose a... I chose to turn the microphone first. This morning I chose a topic that uh, had been rattling around in my brain for a while, and then uh, somebody mentioned to me since we went to Bridge Day here recently, uh, the leap of faith, and uh, actually decided to take that and run with it. So um, it also ties in with a video that I once watched. Uh, it was a gentleman by the name of Louis Giglio. You've heard me mention him before. Um, actually, uh, one of the Calvary girls actually turned me on to him, and he's he's great. I love to listen to him, and he's pretty close on uh, on his teaching, and I... Uh, this is actually a lesson from his, he had a series of sermons back in 2012, and it was uh, called Take the Plunge. And this is, uh, a lot of it is from his, his video. If you get a chance to watch it, they've, uh, they've got it on YouTube now. A lot of that came from that. Well, what we're going to look at today is, is taking that leap of faith. Uh, we're talking about uh, growing up in Christ. We're all going to be talking about spiritual maturity. And then we're also going to look at part of God's dream for us. Do you guys have any goals? Anybody have any goals? We all have goals. Some of them are really big goals. Some of them are, I'm going to buy a house. Some of them are, I'm going to get married. Some of them may be, I'm going to pay off my credit cards. I'm going to start school or, or go to college. Those are big life-changing goals, and we have some of those goals. Sometimes we have smaller goals. Um, the holidays are coming up, and before the holidays come up, I'm going to lose five pounds. Or uh, winter's coming up, I'm going to try to wax that car before the salt gets here. Or maybe your goal is, I'm going to try to stay awake for the next 22 minutes. But we all have goals. And how are you progressing on those goals? Are, are you making headway on them? And those are goals that we want to accomplish and that we want to take place. But what about goals that God may have for you? How are you progressing on those goals? Are you making headway on those? Jerry read to us from Ephesians, and I'd like to hit just a few of those verses again. So Ephesians in the fourth chapter, starting in verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up until we reach all unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. This is a goal that God wants from us. God wants us to become mature. And He wants us to carry that out into the world. He wants us to reflect to the world. He wants us to show the world the full measure of Christ living in us. This is a pool. And if your wife and your daughter have been wanting a pool, this is a pool. It's easy. It's not complicated. But what kind of pool is it? It's a kiddie pool. And who uses a kiddie pool? Kids. Absolutely. It would look pretty ridiculous for me to get in to the kiddie pool. I think I'll swim some laps. <laughs> but the kiddie pool is great. The kiddie pool is okay. It's simple, it's easy, and it's ankle deep. But it's okay. The problem is that 20 years or 15 years or t t let's say five years, you buy this for a four-year-old, five years down the road, it's too small. We're not supposed to be standing in a kiddie pool when we're nine years old. We need to progress out of that. 
But this is a kiddie pool, and it's okay. If you have just found Christ, if you have just... Yesterday, you, we were lost in, in sin. We were lost in the world. And somebody comes, and they tell us this thing called the gospel. And we realize that we have a Savior. The kiddie pool is great. That's the place that we need to be. I, I, don't, I don't know the exact difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament. And I'm not sure if there's... Uh, 12 commanders or 10 disciples, but, but I've got a Savior and I've got hope and, and the kiddie pool is great where you need to be. But there is a God and a Savior and a, and a Spirit that wants us to move out of that, that kiddie pool. And it wants us to get a little bit deeper. And that's where we need to, the, this to start going and, and we need to get deeper in our understanding of God and and deeper in our intimacy with Jesus Christ. The kiddie pool was great. We're going to read a little bit more in Ephesians, uh, starting actually in the first verse. Now Paul is a prisoner uh, in chains right now, and he's writing to the, the church of the Ephesians, or writing to the Ephesians, and he's in this deep water, and he believes in Christ, and he's chained up for it. But let's read. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a faith or a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. And that's where we'd like to stop. And we know those verses. We're familiar with those verses. We use those verses a good bit of the time to let us, people know that we're one church, and there's one God. But let's read on. But to each of us, uh, I'm sorry, to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does it mean he ascended? Or it, what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and then the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Christ took the plunge. He went all in. That's who Christ was. He came down from heaven to the very earth that he made, lived, lived a, a life, and then he took the plunge into death. We were at the Golly Bridge last Saturday, and these base jumpers, and, and here's just some trivia for you, base, I always wondered what that meant, base jumping. Figured if, if you were on the base, you couldn't jump. The base was the base. But base stands for buildings and antennas and structures and earth. And these are all things that base jumpers jump off of. But these base jumpers, when they came to the edge of that bridge, they stood at the edge of the bridge, and 876 feet below, they bailed off. They, they didn't hang on to the side and dangle off to the side, or, or they, they didn't like crawl off the side. They jumped. They were all in. They bailed off the side. And yes, it was risky. And yes, there was a little bit of uncertainty. They knew that 876 feet down below, they were going to stop. They just didn't know how fast. But they jumped. They jumped and they were all in just as Jesus was all in. He plunged into humanity. Jesus plunged into this earth that he created. Jesus plunged into flesh and blood. Jesus plunged into history. Jesus plunged into our hearts. And Jesus plunged into the cross. Jesus didn't just come 
tippy-toeing up to Golgotha and say, oh, let's take a couple splinters in each hand and that'll be good. Nah, Jesus went all in. He gave everything he had, which was his life. That's all he had. He couldn't give anymore. Jesus gave his entire life. He plunged. He was all in. And this one that we know is Jesus that descended from heaven, took the plunge, gave us his all, and then ascended back to heaven, has given gifts to us. And he's given spiritual leaders around us so that we can grow up and mature into the full measure of Christ. Not so we can spend our entire life waiting around in this kiddie pool. Jesus says, this isn't the life that I wanted for you. Jesus says, I'm all in. I took the plunge. I'm all in. And I want you with me over here in the all in. Now here's some facts about the kiddie pool. In the kiddie pool, we want to be continually fed. In the kiddie pool, we've got the kids and we feed the kids. And that's the way we want it. I think that's the way Jesus wants us. He wants us to do with our kids. He wants us to start feeding the kids. And we want it that way because we want to have control over what we feed our kids. There's a lot of people out there in the world that would like to feed our kids some stuff that we don't want them to be fed. We want to feed our kids. And we want them to learn what's good for us. And then, and a little bit later, they're going to move out and they're, and they're going to be coming home from school in the afternoon and they're going to say, well, I'd like to have a snack. And when they open up the doors and they start feeding themselves from what we've taught them, they're going to learn which, nah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't eat that. Maybe I'll get this. And then eventually, they're going to move out, they're going to be in college, they're going to be on their own, and they're going to go to their own grocery store, and they're going to buy the food, and they're going to be feeding themselves completely. And then pretty soon they're going to have friends over, and they're going to start feeding them. And that's the natural progression of, of earthly food, and that's the same progression that we want when it comes to spiritual food. We want that, that milk to begin with, and then we eventually get weaned off the milk, start into that meat. And that's that natural progression that we want. But when we're sitting here waiting for that next spoonful, that's kiddie pool. And unfortunately, and Stan touched on this this morning, that's the way preachers have to feed us sometimes. They have to, they have to jazz it up and sweeten it up and, and make it funny and, and, and just enough for us to open up and take that one more spoonful. And it's sad that, that, that we can't uh, feed ourselves more. The other problem with the kiddie pool is it's all about me. When we're standing in the kiddie pool, it's all about me. It's, well, I like being a Christian because, well, I love God and, and I love the things that God can do for me. And I, I love God and, and I like going to church because I feel good when I'm around other Christians. And, and I like I like going to church and, and, I, and I love all this stuff because I just feel better like I'm, I'm a better me. And that's okay. When, when every one of us first became Christians, that's what we wanted. It, it, was, it was all about me and that's, that's what enticed us. We wanted that. But there comes a time when eventually we realize that it's not about me anymore and it's about me uplifting Christ's name and it's about me glorifying Him and share him with others. That's taking the plunge. Now most of us like being in the kiddie pool because that means I'm in charge. I'm in control. I can control when I get in. I can control when I get out. I really don't make that big a splash when I get in and out of this kiddie pool. It's easy. There's not a lot of commitment. But we've got to figure out that we were never in control to begin with. This just now dawned on me, and maybe it's dawned on you before, but I absolutely had no control when I came to be in this world, and neither did you. You had absolutely no say in whether you were born into this world, onto this planet, Earth. No control. So at what point in our life did we decide, I am going to be in control of my life? We never were. And why would you want to be? 
why would you not want God to be in control? That one that knows everything about everything, why wouldn't you want him to be in control of everything? We do that with everything else in our lives. If our kids get sick, we want them to be to the best pediatrician that we can take them to. If I have a heart attack, I want the best pilot flying the best airplane with the best technology to take me to the best hospital, and I want the best cardiologist there working on me because life's important. If I have to go to court, I want one of the best lawyers sitting beside of me. In our spiritual life, why wouldn't we want the great physician to take care of us? Why wouldn't we want the one that knows us better than anybody else to be our advocate? So we need to take that plunge. We need to live Christian lives to the fullest. You know, we have a natural desire to want more. And if you don't believe me, when you go home here at 2 o'clock afternoon when I'm done, uh, when, when you go home, take a look around. We want more. Think about five years ago and what you have now. We want more. We should want more than the kiddie pool. We should want some deeper water. But how do I get there? Is it up to the preacher to, to feed it to me one spoon at a time? Is it up to our elders? They're supposed to take care of the flock. Is it up to the elders to make sure I get out of the kiddie pool? What about our youth leaders? Youth, is it up to them to get us out of the kiddie pool? And no doubt they're going to help. And no doubt we're going to rely on them. But it's absolutely up to us. We do that with all of our other goals. If we want to get out of credit card debt, we don't just sit there in the living room and think, well, I'd like to get out of credit card debt and I'll watch a few more commercials of people trying to sell me stuff and just hopes that the credit card fairy just comes in and takes all my debt away. If we want a new car, we don't drive down to the car lot and drive around looking at new cars one day out of the week and let the salesman talk to us a little bit and just expect a car to magically appear in our driveway. It's not the way it works. We have to work for it. We have to do our own part in this. Albert Einstein is given credit with saying this. I don't know exactly who came up with it. I did some research on it trying to find out exactly where it came from, and I never did really come to a concrete conclusion. But he's given credit in saying that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It's crazy to live the life that we've always lived and expect to get to the deeper water. Now there's a process that we're going to have to take. And each one of us are going to take a little bit different path because we're all been given different gifts. We're all at different places in our lives. And you can look at uh, Romans 12, 6. First is some spiritual formation. God may say to you, this is my word, and I gave it to you years and years ago. We talked about that this morning. I gave you this a little over 2,000 years ago. This is my word, and this is your way to heaven. And it's about time you plunge into it. Spiritual formation. Lee, Wednesday night, had us turn to the book of Daniel. Well, I know where the book of Daniel is, and I've whizzed past Psalms and Proverbs and... And then I flipped back for a little bit, and then I flipped forward. And finally, I went to about the fourth page into the table of contents and finally found what page it was on. Folks, I've been a Christian for 35 years. There is absolutely no good reason that I'm still ankle deep in the Old Testament. Speech and conduct. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, it reads... When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away the ways, or I put the ways of childhood behind me. When we're kids, we can say some things that we probably ought not say when we're adults. When we're kids, there's things that are cute and that are funny that if we would say them as adults, We'd look kind of funny standing in the kiddie pool. We need to grow. We need to think about what we're saying. We need to think about our actions. And we need to step out. 
Guilty pleasures. Four words. Get rid of them. And we all know what they are. I'm not going to start giving examples. But they are things that take up our time that are absolutely worthless in growing our maturity towards Christianity. And we know what they are, and they're different for each of us. But we know that if we really listen to God, He is going to say, you need to get rid of that and replace it with this. And this is one time when we're really going to have to battle Satan. Because Satan has such a strong foothold on change. And he lies to us. He's the father of lies. And he lies to us. He'll say, Mike, you need to hang on to this kiddie pool. It's, it's okay to, to keep that kiddie pool there. Just, just leave one foot in it. You can get to the deeper water, but just leave it there. You might need this kiddie pool. He'll lie to us. And we need to pray. And we need to ask strength. And we need to get into the book. And we need to battle him get rid of that because he's got a strong foothold on us when it comes to change. Daily outlook. And what do I mean by daily outlook? I mean when you wake up in the morning, ah, this today, is this really going to stay? wonder what's going to happen to go wrong today. I wonder, oh, I hate my job. That's not the way you wake up. God gave you breath. The very one that built this universe, you know, on a, on a first name basis. How, how good is that? You, you should get up and say, hey, I may not like my job, but God, I love you. I'm ready to go. And I can't wait to see what you have in store for me today. Because I guarantee that the one that made the duck bill platypus has got a whole lot better plan for my day today than what I could ever come up with. God has created a, a world for us to live in, and if you let him lead you on a life, uh, <coughs> be in the driver's seat. You've seen those bumper stickers before. It says, God is my co-pilot. I don't know why they sell those. Why would you want God as your co-pilot? Rip that off and step into the passenger seat. Let him drive. That's when you're starting to mature. giving. God may say to you, it's time you take your time and your talents and you start giving. Because giving is a really big key to tell you where maturity is. Because in the kiddie pool, it's all about me. As you mature and you get to that deep end, it's all about giving to others. It's all about feeding others. And it's all about giving the glory to God. There's no me left. and intimacy with Jesus. Jesus wants you to know Him intimately. He doesn't want you to recognize Him as you pass Him on the street. He doesn't want you to say, oh yeah, I know who that is when you see Him on TV. He wants you to know Him intimately. You can stay in the kiddie pool, and you can have your Bible, and you can look up Daniel and the table of contents, or you can come over here and you can plunge into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And over here, when you take that plunge, there's no little blue and white rope with floaties on it and a lifeguard standing there saying, no, 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 you can't, you can't go that deep. You, no, no, stop, back here, back, to, back towards the shallow end. No, with Christ, you can get as deep as you want. You can go as far as you want. You can get as intimate as you want with Jesus Christ. And some of us are staying there, standing here saying, well, I'm pretty deep. I'm, I'm waist high. I'm, I'm chest high. I, I'm, I'm, well, I'd hate to be those folks over there in that kiddie pool. And Jesus is way down here saying, the deep end's over here. The deep end's over here. Don't worry about the kids in the kiddie pool. That's where they need to be right now. But you're here, and you need to be over here. No matter where we're at in the depth of that water, there's always deeper water. And Jesus is there. And that's where he wants us. You know, I picture a dad standing in the pool. 
and he's he's got his feet on the bottom. He's he's pretty secure. He's standing on the bottom, and he's got his hands up in the air, and the kid's jumping in. The kid knows that it's over my head. The kid knows that I can't touch the bottom. I can't swim. But Dad's there. And he's going to catch me. That's Christ. Doesn't make any difference how far we plunge off in. We might be, not be able to touch the bottom. We can't swim. We don't know. There's uncertainty down there. But Christ is there and He's going to catch us. We know that He will catch us. He know that He grabbed a hold of Peter's hand and brought him up out of the depths to walk on the water again. He's already proved Himself. We need to prove ourselves. This morning, if you need the kiddie pool, if you need to get in here and get your feet wet, then right here it is. Actually, we've got a little bit deeper, warmer water back here in the back, but it's right here. If you have not become a Christian before and you need to get your feet wet and you need to start that traveling towards that deeper water, the invitation's here. If you are still got that one foot in that deep, on that shallow end and, and, and you're struggling trying to get to that deeper end where you know you need to plunge, where you know you need to be, but you need strength and encouragement from the congregation. Come and, and, and we'll, we'll pray with you. We'll do whatever it takes to get you to help get us all wet. So we're all in. So if you'd like to take the plunge, then I invite you now as we stand and as we sing.